since in my last video I reviewed another Zoom eyepiece, I thought that now would be a good time to dive a bit deeper into the subject of Zoom versus fixed focal length eyepieces. That is why in today's video I'll be looking at their strengths and weaknesses and give you guys some use case examples where Zoom eyepieces make sense to buy and when not to. I will also make some recommendations based on budget and quality. So let's get this started. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. Zoom eyepieces, also known as variable focal length eyepieces, offer the convenience of being able to adjust the focal length of the eyepiece by simply turning a focal length selector on the eyepiece itself while observing. By modifying the focal length of the eyepiece, you are effectively changing the magnification of the whole optical system. This is because the magnification is the focal length of the telescope divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. This means that by reducing the focal length of the eyepiece, the magnification increases. Increase the focal length of the eyepiece and the opposite happens. So, how do eyepieces work exactly? Well, they work by using a system of lenses or lens elements that can be moved relative to each other to change the effective focal length of the eyepiece. By turning the focal length selector, you actually increase or decrease the distance between lens groups located inside the eyepiece. The main advantage here being the flexibility this ability offers. With a zoom eyepiece, you don't need to swap eyepieces every time you want to change the magnification. You simply change the focal length on the eyepiece. A zoom eyepiece is therefore very easy and convenient to operate. Having a zoom eyepiece that on top is also part focal makes everything easier still, because in this case you don't even need to adjust the focuser of the telescope after changing the focal length of the eyepiece. Not needing to purchase multiple eyepieces for different focal lengths also saves up a lot of money. Money that can be invested in a better telescope for example or different accessories. Zoom eyepieces are also excellent for situations when you want to keep things light and easy to transport. It's a big deal when you don't need to carry your whole eyepiece collection with you when you go on a holiday. A small telescope plus a lightweight tripod and a zoom eyepiece might be everything you need to do some observing while being away. However, it's not all sunshine and roses. Zoom eyepieces have some drawbacks as well. The first one being that because of the variable focal length, their design is more complex, employing more lenses and lens elements compared to a fixed focal length eyepiece. More lenses means more glass that the incoming light from the telescope needs to pass through until it reaches your eye. And since the glass used can never be perfect, the light always loses some of its quality, which reduces the overall image quality the eye perceives. This is why having quality lenses and lens coatings on all surfaces inside the eyepiece is that more important in the case of zoom eyepieces. They help reduce unwanted light reflections and other optical aberrations. Sharpness also suffers a bit in zoom eyepieces. Lenses in any eyepiece usually have a fixed curvature and size, so they can deliver optimum optical performance at a single focal length. Now, if the focal length is variable instead, this needs to be taken carefully into consideration when designing the eyepiece and it requires a more complex manufacturing process, this being an area where manufacturers of zoom eyepieces need to have very high quality standards in order to produce good zoom eyepieces. Because of the variable focal length, zoom eyepieces also tend to have a narrower apparent field of view. On top of this, the apparent field of view usually is variable across the focal length range as well. 
This is why in some cases you end up with an eyepiece that has a wider apparent field of view at shorter focal lengths and the longer the focal length becomes the narrower apparent field of view is. This isn't that great since with a long focal length comes a lower magnification which is typically used for observing wide areas of the night sky. So it's rather counterproductive. In some cases the eye relief also varies across the focal length range, requiring you to get closer or farther away from the eyepiece as you adjust the focal length. This can get problematic if you like to wear your glasses when observing. Another negative aspect is the risk of mechanical failure. As mentioned before, zoom eyepieces employ an internal mechanism which mechanically changes the distance between lenses and this can fail in time if not maintained properly. So keeping dust, sand and other impurities out of a zoom eyepieces mechanism is very important. Because of their strengths and weaknesses, zoom eyepieces are well suited for anyone who wants to upgrade the standard eyepieces telescopes usually come with. Normally these aren't that good and a decent zoom eyepiece will offer improved images and a much better overall viewing experience. Those that are new to this hobby might also benefit from using a zoom eyepiece. If you don't know yet what specific focal lengths work best with your telescope to observe different targets in the night sky, then a zoom eyepiece could make a lot of sense. Zoom eyepieces are also well suited for dedicated travel setups where space is limited and weight saving is key. A good zoom eyepiece combined with a small refractor or Maxutov Cassegrain telescope can be all you need on a holiday. And lastly, zoom eyepieces are also great for bino viewing. Having two identical zoom eyepieces with a click stop mechanism can make the experience of observing with both eyes through a bino viewer much more enjoyable. Out of all the zoom eyepieces I have tested so far, I can recommend the Hyperion Mark IV from Bader Planetarium. Its great optics and good build quality make this a very good choice for an eyepiece covering the medium focal length range. With a variable focal length between 8 and 24 mm, this eyepiece is well suited for observing the moon, some of the planets, the brighter ones, and some bright DSOs as well. If the budget is a bit tighter, then take a look at the SV171 8 to 24 mm eyepiece from Sviboni. It's a much more affordable alternative to the Hyperion that can offer let's say 80% of the Hyperion's performance while costing only a third of the Hyperion's price. If you are mainly interested in planetary observations, then check out the SV215 3-8mm eyepiece from Sviboni. Its excellent optics and great build quality makes this the ideal eyepiece for high power observations. I leave links to the full reviews of these eyepieces in the description below for you to check out later if you want. Now before we move on to the category of fixed focal length eyepieces, I want to thank you all for your support, feedback and all the great suggestions you leave in the comments for me to read. I really enjoy making these videos and you guys are making it all possible by commenting, liking and subscribing to this channel. It's much appreciated. Alright, now that we have a better understanding how zoom eyepieces work, I would like to compare them to fixed focal length eyepieces and see which situations favor the one or the other. As their category suggests, these are eyepieces that feature a fixed value for the focal length. The optical elements inside the eyepiece are perfectly tuned to offer the best image possible at that specific focal length. This is why these eyepieces tend to offer a better optical quality than zoom eyepieces in the same price category. As a rule of thumb, a fixed focal length eyepiece will offer a comparable optical quality uh, as a zoom eyepiece situated in the 
next performance tier. So a medium tier fixed focal length eyepiece should be compared to a top tier zoom eyepiece. Because with a fixed focal length eyepiece you only get a single focal length choice, you will need a few of them to cover the whole focal length range, which is usually considered to be between 2.5 and 38 mm. In my opinion, having at least three eyepieces and maybe a bellow lens is a good setup that offers up to six focal length options. To decide which focal lengths to get, I would split the whole focal length range into three rough categories. Short focal length eyepieces with focal length values between 2.5 and 9 mm for high power planetary observations. Medium focal length eyepieces that have focal length values between 9 and 17 mm for medium power observations. These are good for observing the moon, some planets and some bright DSOs as well. And finally, the long focal length eyepiece category for eyepieces with a focal length between 17 and 38 mm. This would be eyepieces designed for DSO observations and free roaming. With the addition of a decent 2x bellow lens, you would basically double the focal lengths at your disposal without sacrificing too much detail, whilst also saving money in the process. I would recommend investing in fixed focal length eyepieces once you are a bit more experienced and understand how the different characteristics of an eyepiece such as apparent field of view, focal length, eye relief and field stop influence the image you are seeing when looking through the telescope. Once you understand all this, it's much more simple to pick up the exact eyepiece you need to maximize the views of the night sky. I have another video where I explain all these aspects regarding eyepieces if you want to check it out later. A link will be in the description below. Once you feel ready and want to upgrade your eyepieces, you could look at manufacturers like Bader Planetarium, Explore Scientific or Teleview, which are known for their quality products. For high and medium power observations, I really like the 82 degree series from Explore Scientific. The same goes for the Hyperion series from Bader Planetarium. Both are very good upper mid-tier eyepieces capable of offering bright, sharp and contrast-rich views of the night sky. If you are after a premium eyepiece, then take a look at the Delight or Delos series from Teleview. They produce some of the sharpest and contrast-rich images I've seen in any eyepiece so far, making them excellent for planetary observations. For medium to low power observations, I can recommend the Swan series from Omegon as a budget option. For that money, you would be hard pressed to find a better performing eyepiece. Its main strengths being a flat, sharp and aberration free field of view with very good contrast capabilities. Moving up to medium tier eyepieces, you find again the 82 degree series from Explore Scientific, which is really a great all rounder. And for the premium option, I would get either a Teleview Panoptic or a Nagler eyepiece. These are really no compromise eyepieces that can offer some amazing views of the night sky. Unfortunately, all this comes at a steep price. But if you are looking for some of the best eyepieces out there, then there is no way around them. As for the bellow lens, look at the 2x version from Teleview or Explore Scientific. I got my 2x bellow from Teleview some 10 years ago and in my opinion it's still one of the best around. Alright, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. This helps the channel out a lot. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.